Gerald Salenti is my guest. He is a lauded global trend forecaster who researches the future and what it may bring. Robot lovers, perhaps, flying cards, flying cars, mood-altering chips. Do you think one day they'll plant chips in our brains to alter our moods or that kind of thing? Do you study that kind of thing yeah. at the Institute? I mean, look what they're doing already. I mean, if I, if, I was, if I was a liar, if I was a young kid now, they'd have me whacked out on all kinds of... Drugs. I mean, I'd be there, Ritalin. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. one. I ran away from. I ran away from kindergarten. You know, four and a half years old. You know, so they would have had me. They. I got caught kissing Teresa McKelvey at religious instructions. They would have had me locked up. That's true. You know, and, and of mm -hmm. course, they'll do anything they can. Look at what. Look at the Who's news. Who's they? The people in the, the the people that are in the positions within the pharmaceutical industry, within politics. Within the educational system, things get out of hand that they can't control. They want to control it with drugs. Big story just came out about all of these drugs that they're pumping into lower income children throughout the United States that are having trouble learning. Yeah. And and that they're and they're disruptive in class. So they're pumping these kids rather than facing, how about this? Maybe there's a social problem here. Mm -hmm. Maybe the kid, you know, grew up in a family, he doesn't know who his father is. His mother's whacked out on meth. Oh, and you're gonna fix it with some drugs. So are they gonna plant chips in your head? Yeah. They're gonna make you think that the junk food is actually food. So of course they're going to the people that have an interest in making money in certain products. That's the they I'm talking about, the two they's. The, the they's that are interested in making a lot of money and don't care how they can make it, mm -hmm. and the they, they's that are psychopaths or sociopaths that want power. So a big pharma driving the bus or say, I remember the hairspray incident, and they said hairspray isn't good for, for the atmosphere. So they changed, yeah. do you know about yeah, I this? I bet yeah. you do. Yeah. So they changed the hairspray can, and now we can spray it because it's got a different kind of whatever, and it doesn't have the bad stuff, the FCCs or whatever it was. And so uh, being good entrepreneurial North Americans, we send all the hairspray cans to India or overseas. That's what I'm saying. So that, a, yeah. like we didn't really care. We thought, well, we still have to sell it. We'll just sell it to people who don't know. Uh, touch, we, we mentioned high tech, high touch society. What worries you today or what makes you hopeful about internet and cyberspace and connection that way as opposed to you and me? What makes me hopeful mono about it? Mano a mano. Yeah, what makes Womano it, a mano. <laughs> <laughs> what makes me hopeful about it is it's opened up a new communications vehicle that didn't exist before. We have people all over the world communicating with each other. And we we're talking about one of the social networking trends and techno tribalism, bringing people together with the same belief systems mm -hmm. to, to propel something forward of a higher level. You know, there's a lot of people feeling that, you know, things are really bleak now. And my God, look what's going on. It's only going to get worse. Think back. When did the Renaissance happen? It happened after the Black Plague. Estimated 60% of the people in Europe were killed. So the people said to themselves, maybe we're not doing it right. Maybe we're screwing up along the line. So they went back. It was a Renaissance, a rebirth. We can have a rebirth. There were great things that we left behind. It doesn't mean we have to have them back here as they were. They used to say in Italy at the height of the Renaissance in Florence, alle Romana e alla Antica, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients, to describe the quality of their work. Let's bring back quality. Let's bring back dignity. Let's bring mm -hmm. back respect. We can have a change. The Internet is that global communications method. It brings it all together. I follow what's going on in countries all over the world. It's much more difficult to cover up. Unless the country says there will be none in this country if you're in a, uh, a China where they can take it away from you. But humans are ingenious, really, at getting around stuff. You probably noticed that. <laughs> yeah, but, and they're trying to control it in, in every, mm -hmm. virtually every country. I'm sure they're trying to control it here. And they, I know they're doing it in the States. You know, people don't realize what's going on in the States. You know, I do a lot of international interviews. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'll, get a, I'll get do an interview from, you know, a Middle East country. I stopped doing them. Why? Because I don't know if the State Department would label that person a terrorist. And under the new National Defense Authorization Act signed by President Obama on New Year's Eve, anyone having involvement with a terrorist, suspected terrorist, 
The military could come in, break down my doors, take me away. No charges, no judge, no jury, no trial. We remember McCarthyism, or I do. Uh, not well, but I certainly know about it. And uh, there but for the grace of God, go all of us. Uh, back to the Trend Institute, 300 different fields. So do you really uh, look at uh, whether or not we're going to drink coffee in our cars down the road? Uh, in Europe, as you know, they often don't even have cup holders in the not. cars yeah. because yeah. people actually get out of their cars and yeah. go to the coffee That's shop right. and suddenly in North America, not suddenly, not that suddenly, Seattle started at Starbucks. What's the future of that? If, if you were thinking, gee, should I buy a coffee shop? I, I did a, a, a presentation for the National Coffee Association in 1990 in Boca Raton and there were about 350 coffee bars in the United States. And in my book, Trend Tracking, which I wrote in 88, I predicted the gourmet coffee trend. Is it, now it's at a point where something new is going to fill into it. This is kind of peaked at this level. There's always new opportunities for new things. It's going to be, I believe there's going to be a new, new age trend. The one that began to happen back in the 70s and the 80s, it died in the 90s because people started making a lot of money really quickly during the, the dot-com bubble and the internet mm -hmm. revolution. Mm -hmm. Right now, we don't, I have a saying as a Bronx boy, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. So you're starting to see a lot of destabilization worldwide. When these kind of things start to happen, people start looking for the truer meaning of life. And that's what we're going to start seeing now. Along with that, comes new product development in the sense that what can I do to make my life better? How can I live more healthy? How can I be more self-sustaining? So you're going to start seeing, I believe, a real, real drive toward new kinds of products that are life-enhancing and life-improving, breaking down away from the junk model that we have mm. now. So somebody said to you, uh, Gerald, uh, should I start a bookstore? Will we, will we be reading hardcover books uh, down the road, or will we all be reading online and on uh, tablets? Well, I would have said of having a number of books published that working with the publishing industry is no, <laughs> no wonder why they're, they're in the trouble that they right. are. You know, anybody mm -hmm. that's been there knows it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see these things coming. And they're, they're, not, they're not blind to it, but people, again, it, it goes back to the political model. People hold on to an ideology and a belief system, and they won't break it. How many people do you know that call themselves things like, I'm a conservative, I'm a liberal, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm this or that? How about just being you? Mm. So it's the same thing in business. They hold on to the model, and they're afraid to change it. Could you imagine, when I began my business in 1981, I called it the Socioeconomic Research Institute of America. You know why? Because if you said trend forecasting, they'd say, what do you do? You forecast uh, fashion trends? That's as far right. as it went. Now, I'll ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Name me one university in North America where they have trend forecasting courses. How to look ahead so you can plan ahead. Well, you got me. I doubt there is one. I know you teach one. Yeah. What do you teach in the course? We teach how, to, how to identify the trend, how, okay. to, how, to, how to forecast where it's going, how to see the developments and look for new ones. Of course. So, but, you, but imagine here we're talking, and you, every everybody that went to school, they pump history into your brain until uh, you know you have you have multiple choice questions. You know the battle of you know whatever. How about teaching us how we can look ahead? How about teaching us how our actions that we're taking today are going to affect us in the future? What is so, you know, brain? storming about that. Well, and the power of the individual. Know thyself and be exactly who you are. That's a d difficult place to get to. Especially when you go to school when they want you to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Isn't it better now, do you think, <sighs> from the old days? Worse? I, I hated every day of school. No, it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. The educate well, Look, by their deeds you shall mm -hmm. know them. Mm -hmm. Look at the numbers coming out of the American mm -hmm. education system. We don't even win place or show in OECD, uh, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development Data. Wait, it's disgusting. Look, if the country was doing so great educationally, you think we'd be in the problem that we're in? No, I don't, but I think that there is kind of a chutzpah in America that says we are the best. So we do win place it's and delusional. show. It's delusional. But the truth is, 
You don't. It's delusional. There, I, I understand. I, I mean, it's, it, I, it's, I'm saying it. It's, it's a chutzpah. You're right. Mm -hmm. We're the best, no matter what. No matter but what. we have to get back to what's the truth. Exactly. Yeah, they're number one. Number one in the amount of people in jail. Mm -hmm. Number one in the wars that they're fighting around the world. But not perhaps in math class. Not in math. Maybe not the Chinese beat us there. <laughs> I don't know, but what fascinating work you do. Well, and you're here for the SEED uh, uh, conference. And this is one of my, the, my favorite ones that I talk at, it, of all of them, because it really reflects what I do in the sense that it's holistic. Mm -hmm. It's not a stat, economists only look at economic data. You know, people look at politics, geopolitical. And what SEED is, it's about everything. It's about your life. And it also to the business ends of life, and to the education ends of life, and the improvement ends of life. So I bring a different element into it to see where the future is going and how you could prepare, survive, and prevail. You certainly do, and I know you have a black belt, so I'm not fooling with you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank a you pleasure. so much. Thank you. Uh, Gerald Salente, one of the top trend forecasters in the world. Can I give you that? Uh, by their the, the forecasts are there. By yeah, the PR bump, that's no. what it says. No, they're there. They're all the forecasts are there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, remember, you can join me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer or catch our conversations on YouTube. There will be many more fascinating guests to come. Till then, thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today. Thank you.